Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we're gonna get closer to getting the Rockstar moving under its own power. Okay guys, welcome back, and uh, if you missed it, last week was a huge week because we finally got the V8 Audi engine fired up in the Rockster for the first time, and uh, to say I was excited was an understatement. It's such a good step forward to actually get this thing running under its own power, uh, or actually at least starting. Um, there's still a bit to do before we get it running under its own power. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and um, please think about subscribing. It does help us out. A um, couple of things that were brought up with the, uh, the log. I sent the log over to Adam at uh, Lincoln New Zealand uh, just to see when it was running, what was going on. We were having, um, there was a couple of issues that the Lambda sensors weren't reading correctly. There was errors on the uh, the Lambdas, so there's something I need to check out there. And uh, the alternator wasn't charging. So there's a couple of things that weren't going um, perfectly well like they should, but um, it sounded good, it ran, ran well, and uh, I think they're minor issues that can be sorted out. I'm not overly concerned about that. My uh, concerns today are trying to sort of uh, make sure everything is bolted up the way it's supposed to. Make sure um, we can uh, get everything back together enough so that we can uh, look at taking this out for its uh, first drive sometime in the not too distant future. So um, first things first, let's go back to uh, from a couple of weeks ago and uh, let's just sort out those aluminium pipes so that they're not going to rub and move and stuff like that. So we have uh, our aluminium pipes, they're separated and protected by these P-clips, uh, just with some self-tappers, they're plenty fine for this car. Uh, everything's done back up again, and moving back, I've supported the gearbox because I'm going to change over the uh, gearbox mounts. I actually have a couple of uh, these guys, which are Gearbox mounts from Function First, uh, or engine mounts for Function First for the 996 that I was going to put in. Um, but I think they're going to be better served in this car replacing these ones which are completely shot. Okay, next thing I need to do is, uh, the entire time I've had this car uh, pulled apart, the clutch line has been leaking, the clutch master cylinder was dead, so I went and bought myself a, uh, a new one. Surprisingly, this thing is entirely plastic. I would have thought it was be metal, but that's what they are, this is a replacement. So, uh, let's get the clutch master cylinder in, and uh, we're another step closer to uh, getting the car together. All right, it's hard to film in here, but here is my master cylinder, and uh, I'm having a lot of trouble compressing it hard enough to get it into the uh, the the hole and get the bolt in the side of it, which is uh, the bolt there. It's got to go in up here, so you've got to try and compress it into this hole. Um, the trick, I believe, is uh, after doing a bit, bit more research, is to put a bunch of rubber grease around the rubber part of it and then uh, try and use a screwdriver or something, get some leverage to hold it in there and then try and hopefully get the, uh, the bolt in. So let's give it another go. All 
right, so the grease on the slave cylinder was the trick, and there's actually, um, where the bolt hole is, there's like a little tab that sticks out, so if you get the grease on it, you can slip it past enough and then sort of plop it into the right spot, and then it lines up the hole and gets everything right, so uh, that is definitely a tip for anyone changing a uh, boxed uh, clutch slave cylinder. I have now bolted up my tail shafts, my drive shafts, um, the, uh, the gearbox is bolted in, um, I put a couple of uh, cable ties to hold the, um, the clutch lines away from the exhaust. They are close-ish, I probably need to do something about some heat shielding there, but uh, um, they're not, I mean, they're, they're, they're not touching, they're, they're in there, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that fares. Um, so, um, continuing on, we need to start putting on some of the, um, the underside bracing again to uh, brace this thing up. Alright, so for those of you who were watching previously will have seen that um, I had to sort of already modify my centre console to get these cables to be able to fit back up with the gearbox. And um, what I've had to do is I've actually had to unbolt this whole gear shift mechanism to get the length inside the, uh, the engine bay just because they have to go up and over the engine. It's so much further. I've seen other guys have been able to make them fit. I'm finding that they're just too short. Like it's there's not much in it, but they're... Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a tight uh, run they have to do over the top of the engine. So um, what I'm thinking of doing is, is they currently go underneath the gear shift here, and I'm thinking that if I can, if I can actually just run the cables over the top of that, um, I don't care about the center console anymore. This is a race car. I may actually change where this shifter is completely later and maybe raise it up or, or get it sort of uh, in, in another position. So. I'm not overly concerned about moving it, but uh, to get things to work for now, if I can get it bolted back into the original spot is a good thing, and that means taking off the handbrake. If that's gonna give me just enough length, that'd be good. I've now got just enough length to be able to bolt the uh, shifter back in again with this lovely blue gear knob. And uh, I just had to trim out the, uh, the inside of the center console a little bit more so that the, the uh, cables can sort of clear up a little bit higher and uh, get a straighter run to go out the back, similar to what I did in the back. And uh, that is good. So that is another job down. All right, I'm back at it and a little lighter. Um, now it's uh, time to put a belt onto this, and um, obviously because I've removed half of the components, it's not gonna take the original belt, but I cut the original belt to use as a template and, uh, and get a rough length, took it down and then ordered a, uh, a belt, and this one now should hopefully be the right size. So let's see if we can fit this through and, uh, and get the belt on, and hopefully it should still run our water pump and power steering. Well, that worked out perfectly. That, uh, I definitely wouldn't want it any tighter. That is, is good. And uh, with the tensioner, which is still the factory tensioner down here, even though I removed the air conditioning, um, it still has a, a good run around everything, around all the pulleys, and uh, that is gonna do the job. All right, so next thing I'm gonna tackle is I have to fill up the uh, coolant system. And um, I had a big issue trying to do that on the 996. And it's very difficult to actually fill the entire system with coolant straight away. So the uh, the way to get around that is with one of these things. Now I bought one of these kits and this is a vacuum uh, bleeder, vacuum filling coolant system. So basically what we do is we stick this rubber cone into the radiator fill point and then we suck a vacuum into the whole system, just uh, plugging it into uh, the air compressor, suck it down until it holds a, a nice vacuum does two things, you can actually um, shut off the valve and see if it, 
if it actually starts leaking, you know, if it, if it holds a vacuum and you can, you can shut it down and it, and it doesn't actually drop pressure, you, you know you should have a nice sealed system. There's no leaks anywhere, which is a, one good thing, particularly for this system where I've made it all up out of bits and pieces. Uh, and um, also, because it sucks the air out, you actually get to, you can uh, open another valve and suck all the coolant into the system. So it just fills the vacuum straight away, gets all the air out. You might have to do it a couple of times, but uh, definitely worthwhile. Um, I'll put a link in the description to uh, one of these things because uh, I, I said I didn't use it on the 996 and it was a nightmare to fill it. It took me six or seven goes. It kept sort of, the car kept getting sort of hot and, uh, and I have to wait for it to sort of purge all the bubbles out and then top it up again. And it's just a, just a headache. This should hopefully save those issues. So let's suck a vacuum in it and uh, start filling it up with coolant. All right, so I've opened the heater up. Uh, it's holding a nice vacuum in, in the system here, which is great. So now I'm gonna take my, uh, my line here, stick it into my coolant and uh, hopefully suck it all into the system and uh, get a nice air-free fill up in my uh, in the whole system We'll see how well this thing worked, but I am a big fan. It made life so much easier. Um, yeah, definitely if you've got either a, uh, a 986 or a 996 or a lot of modern cars, this thing just makes life, just makes it easy. And you just sort of turn it on, make sure you don't run out of cooling, otherwise you're gonna suck air into the system again. I did run a second vacuum in it uh, and just uh, and topped it up again. The, uh, the coolant level is slightly higher uh, than in theory, I think it's supposed to be at this stage, but uh, we can deal with that. Anything extra is gonna overflow. It's not a big deal anyway. Uh, I, I think it's basically topped up. That's done, quick, easy, simple, happy with that. All right, so final thing to do now is to bleed the clutch. I've topped up the uh, reservoir and uh, I've got my vacuum bleeder ready down here. So let's uh, bleed this, see if I can do the one man bleed. If not, uh, I'll uh, rope Mrs. Jeff in and we'll, uh, we'll get the clutch bled. I am having a slight leak on that uh, new slave cylinder that I've got there, so I'm gonna have to track down something on that. And I have realized that I messed up the power steering because I, for some silly reason, thought that the reservoir was at the front of the car, so I just had to connect up the pump um, to the two lines under the car and that would be it. And I was very wrong because basically, uh, one of those lines is the line from the power steering pump going to the power steering rack, but then I actually need a reservoir on the box that it was actually sort of integrated into the top of the pump itself. So where, whereas the Audi had a separate reservoir, which for some reason I must have thrown away and I no longer have, but Raceworks is coming to the rescue. They have a uh, aftermarket one, which is gonna make much better in here anyway, which is on its way, but it's not here yet. So I cannot actually get the car running. I don't wanna start it with the power steering pump connected and uh, uh, no power steering fluid in it. Uh, that's probably not good for the power steering pump. Um, so we're really close. I really wanted to drive it this episode, but I, I'm just, I can't. I've got a little bit of clutch issue, a little bit of power steering issue. We do have coolant in the car. Um, I've tidied up a bunch of bits and pieces. I've put the interior back together again. I've um, started nutting out what I'm gonna do about the engine cover, because obviously the engine cover is not going to fit the original one. That This engine sits a little bit higher, so I'm gonna have to modify that. But uh, they're all things I'm gonna have to tackle on another episode because we are out of time. And so hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, 
Hopefully it hasn't put you off of this uh, conversion too much. I'm definitely not a mechanic. I have definitely uh, uh, seen myself as much more of a fabricator. Uh, so the fabrication side I love. The mechanic side, uh, yeah, <laughs> it makes me tear my hair out a bit more. Uh, and I have less experience with, generally. So uh, if you're enjoying this, please like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. And if you need to find parts for any of your Porsches, whether they're air-cooled, uh, Boxsters, Macans, Caymans, whatever you've got, uh, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.